Um, Annika has her MA master's in education with a focus on dual language education from San Diego State University. She has worked as a professional artist, arts educator and arts administrator for her entire career. Most recently as a director of Department of Arts, Humanities and Languages and Digital Arts at UC San Diego Extension. So while majoring in studio art at UC San Diego, uh, Santa Cruz, oops, our neighbor to the north, Nelson also studied at the renowned University of Applied Arts Kunst in Vienna, Austria. After graduating, she turned her focus to arts education and illustration. At the Children's Museum in San Diego, she created and managed numerous classes and art making activities for young people in her role as art director. She has illustrated a number of books and her artwork has appeared in numerous publications from diverse companies and organizations such as Patagonia, Elite Racing, Macmillan Companies, Aesthetics Inc. and Ar Arthritis Foundation, San Diego chapter. Her growing list of public art installations includes the interactive murals at Rady Children's Hospital Clinics and a sculpture series at the Tidelands Park in Coronado California. Her latest installation includes three whimsical bicycle racks along 101 in Lucadia, California. A warm welcome to you, Annika Nelson. Uh, thank you so much. This is such an honor to be with you all again. And I remember doing this when I was still new. <laughs> and, um, and here we go, still on Zoom. Um, it looks like I'm at the Craft Center, but I'm not at the Craft Center. Um, but I'm very happy to say that we um, we definitely we had a an in person quarter last quarter in fall, and uh, the place that you see behind me is no longer clean um, as that rendering is. We we got some fingerprints all over the place. We got some paint on the floor, we got ceramics on the walls. We are starting um, to really use this space. And I'm, I'm just really honored to be able to, to share, to tell you a little bit about this resource um, that is here for all of us. You as retirees um, receive um, special pricing uh, so that we can make it accessible to you guys. And, um, and if it's okay with you, Suzanne, I can, I'd love to run through some slides. So if yes, I'm- Yes, absolutely. To... You are a co-host, so you have screen share ability. All right, so um, here we go. And um, let's see, I'm gonna start from the beginning. Dun, dun, dun. Perfect. So, can you see it? Okay, fantastic. Well, I am I am truly honored to to be able to make this short presentation to your group. Um, I would say that um, really it is uh, the work of many of you, uh, former uh, part of the UC San Diego community, who really brought back the craft center. Um, because many of you know, there was a craft center on campus. Many, many well, it, it closed in 2012, um, but it was started in the 70s. So many of you are probably familiar with the old space um, and helped lobby uh, campus leadership to bring it back. So it is really, truly an honor to be part of Craft Center 2.0. I, um, I did get to teach at the old craft center. And when I was the director at um, Arts, Humanities and Languages uh, at Extension working for Mary Walshock, who is gonna be your other presenter, um, I, I did work, I did have the pleasure of many craft center artists to, to teach for Extension as well. So um, here we go. Welcome to the craft center. Let's see. Oh, and just so you know, my nickname is Analog Anika. So, oh, there we go. All right. So, um, we are a new self 
funded campus space. And I think it's important, um, like similar to extension, we are a self-funded part of the university. Um, and we are a wonderful 11,000 square feet of space dedicated to the exploration and celebration of creative process. Really, uh, we align in so many ways with our chancellor's vision for making campus a, a destination for everyone, um, a place that we can connect students, alumni, retirees, faculty, staff, and community friends in a space uh, that uh, invites dialogue and exploration around the arts among all the other offerings that, that this amazing campus has to offer. Um, and I think that, you know, I, whenever I put these presentations together uh, in, in sort of live in the Zoom world, I feel so lucky that I have such beautiful photos and we have such great content to share with you. Um, the Craft Center is, is become a, an amazing um, magical vortex, if you will, for people who are, are, are creative or who want to be creative. Um, and, and I really have dedicated my life to making the arts accessible to anyone and everyone. Um, and the, I feel like the Craft Center has a unique set of on ramps, if you will. Um, to that creative process, whether you're someone who's interested in, in weaving or in ceramic art or surfboard shaping, there is something, I believe, for everyone at the Craft Center. Um, and, and, we have, and we have really consciously tried to create a culture uh, that encourages uh, people to shelve their inner critic. Um, I believe that everybody um, is an artist. Getting dressed in the morning is a series of creative uh, decisions. It's color, texture, form, um, et cetera. And so I feel like I feel like at the Craft Center that we have so many different wonderful offerings that anyone and everyone can come and be part of our community. We are uh, located in the heart of the new North Torrey Pines Living and Learning neighborhood. This was uh, an, an amazing uh, place to be located. The old craft center was this amazing little hidden gem that was tucked away in a very beautiful little eucalyptus grove. And now our 11,000 square feet of space is uh, situated smack dab in, in the newest part of campus of the North Torrey Pens Living and Learning neighborhood. And we're surrounded by amazing um, places to eat, uh, to get coffee. And, and that really gets us um, at, in, the, in sort of in the middle of all what happens on campus. If people walk by and they can see what's happening in our space and hopefully their curiosity is piqued and they come in and they play with me. And like I mentioned earlier, we were lucky enough to have permission to open last quarter. Uh, as you know, with COVID, it was a little, you know, sort of, un it was very uncertain, never mind little, it was very, very uncertain about whether we were going to be able to have in person um, offerings. And we really couldn't do what we needed to do online. Um, we did have some wonderful, um, you know, instructor led activities, but the Craft Center is all about hands-on learning and about utilizing the equipment and the materials that we have in this space. And so we were really delighted that campus leadership gave us permission um, to be able to open uh, last quarter. And we're planning on continuing on um, starting at the end of this month in terms of our offerings for winter quarter. So, and all the photos that I'm showing you are, um, are basically document some of the activity that we had this past quarter. And, it, you know, nothing, um, you know, it was a lot of work, I will tell you, to get that space up and running, um, just with supply chain issues, with, you know, sort of not being able to meet in person for so long. It was, it was a very difficult um, 
uh, it was a very difficult thing to be able to to equip and activate and program each of the different studios. But we ran, um, we offered around 40 classes. We ran about 30 of them. Some of them got canceled due to, to changes, not being able to get equipment um, or, or um, some of the, the tools that we needed due to supply chain. But we ended up running 30 classes last quarter. We had almost 500 people. Um, over the course of the quarter, come and take, uh, you know, seven week long classes or short workshops. Um, we had one uh, history professor, Professor Sarah Schneven, who uh, basically paid for all 200 of her history students to come and take classes with us. These were, were students studying Asian history and it was an online class, but we broke them up into groups of 20 and they got to come to the craft center and take classes. And um, it was just remarkable um, really seeing how, you know, how, how hungry these students were to be able to do something with their hands and to be able to meet each other in person for the first time. Um, so just to give you an example, so, so because we are self-supporting, we do have to charge for our, our offerings. This is how we pay our instructors. This is how we pay for our materials and our tools and all the amazing equipment that we have. But like the old craft center, we have a three-tiered fee structure. And here I'm just giving you an example of a six-week ceramic class. Students pay $144. Faculty, staff, alumni, and retirees pay $288. And the general public have to pay $360. So we really try and keep things as accessible as, as possible. That includes 18 hours of instruction um, with a subject area expert. It also includes glazes and the cost of firing. Um, also, one of the things I really am hoping you guys walk away with is there is, depending on your time budget and your budget budget, they, we try and have different ranges of offerings. So if you only have time for a short weekend workshop, we have those. Um, we'll eventually have, you know, sort of lunchtime, uh, one hour uh, offerings when people return to campus. Um, typically most of our, our, our classes are in the evenings and on weekends um, because that's when the general community can find parking on campus because you know that's not very fun. Um, eventually, we will also have retail sales. Um, uh, we'll be able to sell art materials. Uh, we'll be selling some of our instructor work, student work. We had a holiday fair uh, this past December, which was, I'm sorry, I don't have any photos of that, but it was really wonderfully successful. We had, I think we had 12 different instructors come and sell some of their work. We're keeping things a little bit small. Um, we could, um, we will be growing all of these things, but with social distancing, et cetera, we're trying to sort of roll out a little bit more slowly. Um, so now I'm just going to walk you through uh, each of the studios. Um, we have six different studios at the Craft Center. And uh, the first one that we're virtually visiting is the Mixed Media. Um, space. It's a wonderful space that is very flexible. We have these beautiful tables all on wheels uh, where we can teach everything from found fashion uh, to shibori tie-dye uh, to leather arts. We did mosaics. We did stained glass. Um, we also did fused glass tiles in that space. Um, and then for some of our lower tech jewelry classes, we also have those in in that space. We also have a woodworking studio um, equipped with band saws, table saws, drill presses, lathes. Um, uh, you can see one of our uh, advisors, he's actually too busy teaching for Palomar right now. Um, on the left, Chance Coulter, who is really one of San Diego's finest um, wood turning experts. He promises he will teach for us eventually. He's on the left and then, um, uh, Koga-san uh, is on the right. He is a wood 
carving master from Japan. Um, he's going to be teaching a chopstick carving workshop for us this winter. And he participated in our holiday craft fair. And you can see some of the amazing things that he carves by hand um, that he sold at the, at the craft fair. Our jewelry studio, you can see on the left, it is next level high tech. We have fume extractor. Um, those are called elephant trunks that you see. Um, and we have gas piped into each of the workstations. Uh, we have annealing kilns. We have um, metal stamping equipment. We have all sorts of amazing things where we can do uh, casting. We can do torch enameling. Uh, and any number of different jewelry techniques. It, uh, that studio is not yet available to use because we haven't signed, been signed, the fire marshal hasn't signed off on us yet. We have to be very careful of our neighbors because we um, basically are nestled within a residential community. So we're extra careful, which is just fine by me. But in the meantime, you can see on the right, um, a felted bead necklace um, made by uh, Tara Magbu, who is one, our lead jewelry instructor. Um, so in the meantime, we are still offering uh, jewelry classes. They just don't use, utilize to the full extent the, the jewelry studio yet, but we're hoping that that will be online for spring quarter. Um, also, I think one of our biggest uh, draws is our ceramic studio. Here we have two photos of the wheel studio. We have 20 electric wheels at the craft center, as well as a wonderful hand building space, just incredible instructors. Um, really, I think the, the thing I'm most proud of having accomplished throughout this pandemic is that somehow we created this amazing community of subject area experts who are incredible gifted artists who are passionate about what they do and incredibly passionate about sharing their knowledge with our students. And they jumped in and they've been incredibly flexible um, and incredibly generous with their time and their talent um, to help us uh, tweak the studio spaces so that there are amazing spaces to learn and also in developing programs that will meet the needs of beginning students as well as intermediate and advanced students as well. Unlike the old craft center, we have surfboard shaping at the new craft center. It is, it's remarkable. Um, you know, having grown up around here, uh, you know, surfing is definitely part of our San Diego DNA and especially part of UC San Diego DNA. Um, it is a remarkably a precise process. Uh, the instructors are all in some ways typical surfers. Um, and they're very, um, uh, you know, they're very go with the flow until you get them in one of those shaping bays. And then they are very precise. And they helped us uh, design each of these bays uh, to, be, to be, you know, in some ways, almost like an operating room where the tools, um, the layout, the lighting, the ventilation is all incredibly important. Um, so it's this wonderful intersection of, uh, of advanced sculpture, of engineering, of artistry, and then of course sports. And, um, and so that's been just a, a remarkable education for me, um, working with each of these instructors to, to set up these programs. Uh, this is a photo of Christina Eng. She's our, one of our um, our culinary arts instructors. She did a fun um, online uh, workshop last spring quarter on mocktails. On um, and also, I couldn't help but throw in this beautiful ceramic layer cake. It is not a real cake, <laughs> but it is just such a gorgeous photo. And there was a blank spot on my slide, and that's actually a ceramic piece done by one of our ceramics volunteers. Uh, who is an incredibly talented ceramic artist and, um, and also participated in our, in our holiday craft fair. Um, 
Also, um, these are just photos of, of some of the hands-on workshops that we had. On the right, we have some of Professor, Professor Schneven's um, history students learning how to do backstrap loom weaving. Um, and I convinced my 85-year-old mother um, to come in and teach uh, backstrap loom weaving. So she complied and had lots of fun tying all these, these students up to various pieces of furniture in all around the craft center. It was, it was wonderful, it was really great. And then you can see on the left are one of our student workers um, giving our enormous dog sculpture, Fluffy, a big hug. Um, if you uh, see the outside of the craft center and peek in on the inside, you can see some uh, sculpture done by a wonderful local artist named Max Romer who um, was kind enough to, to loan us some of his sculpture. Um, really, this was started in last spring, uh, spring uh, to entice students to stay on campus. Um, and we just loved his sculpture so much, we haven't given it back. Um, so that's another thing that we want to have at the Craft Center is we want to be able to utilize that space um, to have exhibitions that are open to anyone and everyone, um, Max did a, a couple artist talk. He did a workshop with students from Sixth College to teach them about his process. Um, and, in, you know, it's just an amazing space that, you know, we're still sort of building the plane as we fly it. There's so much possibility. There's so much opportunity. Um, and, you know, sort of inviting, inviting people to come and tell us what they want. Um, you know, what interests them, what kind of classes are they interested in, is, is part of how we want to be a true community resource in, in the real sense of the word. We want this to be an inviting space where people from all over the community can work side by side and, and learn from each other. Um, this is a photo of um, one of our team building workshops, even before we were open uh, for fall quarter, we started offering team building uh, opportunities. So different uh, departments on campus would um, work with us to create uh, workshops uh, for them to bring their department to. And so they were in some ways our first guinea pigs um, to come into the craft center space and start to to use it as, as a space to de-stress, to um, see, you know, sort of learn new skills and, um, and enjoy, enjoy, enjoy learning something new. Um, let's see. And just for fun, I had to show you, this is our calendar for winter quarter. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're definitely analog uh, in the office here. We had to readjust all of this. It's good everything's uh, not glued down because we had to peel off the the the, the first two, um, actually the first four weeks of January and uh, reshuffle things around. But um, to me, it's a wonderful illustration of the variety of offerings that we have at the Craft Center. Um, just waiting for you to sign up. Um, that's a photo of two of our amazing ceramic volunteers. Um, we do have a, a social media presence. Um, if you care to follow us, we are, we are there uh, um, on social media and we have a website um, and we have a newsletter. So if you do have an interest um, I'll put that in the in the chat maybe and I'll put what our our website is and I'll put my email address in um, and you can email us uh, if you want to sign up for the newsletter um, or find out more information or if you have specific questions for me I, I would love to to answer anything I possibly can um, and this is just a photo of the old craft center on the left and then a rendering of the new craft center on the right. Um, we have come a very long way and the adventure really has just begun. Um, and I really 
welcome you to be part of our unique creative community in any way that you want. You know, where we will eventually need volunteers. We definitely want students to come take our classes. Um, we also are looking for people who have hidden talents um, who might want to teach for us. So um, I will uh, put my email address uh, in the in the chat. Um, and and I'm happy to answer any questions if we have questions right now. Um, uh, Annika, this is so delightful to see this just amazing. And how exciting that you were actually able to open the doors in Paul. And I certainly oh. hope that you know very soon you'll be able to do it again. <laughs> Oh, Again. I know. Right. It's been such a nail biter. I don't have fingernails anyways, but if I had any, they would be all gone because it has just been, that part has just been the hardest part because yeah, yeah, because I mean, you know, to have this wonderful space delivered to you and then you're just <laughs> chomping at the bit wanting to get it all going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But at least we, we pulled it off for fall quarter and we are, we are very ready for winter quarter. Um, and already planning spring. So we are up and running and ready to welcome you. And if, you know, we will, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, after January 31st, we will be open. So if you want to come, just swing by and check us out. We love pop-in visitors. I see so Gail's got a question. Visitor, let me just jump in real fast and then I'll recognize yeah. Gail for her question. Yeah. If somebody yeah. comes in and you're in the middle of a class, can they sort of be a, a fly on the wall and stand in the back and watch one um, to see if it's something they're interested in or do you, do you not allow that? Well, I, I think I think we, we do. We want to be sensitive to our instructors um, and not distract them too much. Um, but um, I, I definitely you know, have an open door policy. And, and, but just remember that typically our classes are in the evenings, Tuesday through Friday from six to nine, and then Saturdays and some Sunday classes. Our office hours are generally, you know, sort of um, someone's there from noon onward. Um, and so, uh, you know, you just, you just got to knock loudly on the door now <laughs> to get us to open. <laughs> Great. Okay. Let me have uh, Gail go ahead and give you her question and I'll come back with another question in a minute. Gail. Perfect. So, hi, Annika. Thank you hi. so much. Um, uh, actually I have a, a, a couple questions. Uh, one is. I'm unfamiliar with the with the geography of the campus because I am um, I'm in the I'm a retired in the medical side, so I rarely got to go to the campus. And then by the time I got to the campus, it was locked down. And I so uh, where exactly is the UC San Diego Craft Center? Where is the closest parking? to to reach your craft center and then the third quote my last question is um uh, when are you going to upload the spring um selection thank you oh those are good questions and i'm going to try and remember them all okay so number one our location is um we are located at the north troy pines living and learning neighborhood so it was that huge new complex that they built right on north troy pines road if you're familiar with the glider port at all um, on North Troy Pines and Salk Institute, um, we're sort of in the Northwest corner of campus. Um, and in, it's this gorgeous new complex. So you can't miss us. And we're sort of kitty corner from the old, uh, from the extension complex. So if you know where extension is, hi, Helen, by the way, I see you. <laughs> She's one of my former colleagues from extension. Um, uh, we are sort of kitty corner from extension, North Troy Pines Living and Learning neighborhood, Sixth College, and we're in the Mosaic building. Um, we do, we are listed on Google, but just double, double check um, that we're, it, it's Sixth College, the Mosaic building. We have parking, um, pretty ample parking in, in, the, in the parking structure right below us. So as part of the Mosaic building, um, we are, um, 
there is lots of parking under underneath. Um, when we and we actually that's another reason why we uh, have evening and weekend classes mostly is because that is when the parking is. We did try and run some daytime classes. And, and unless people were faculty, staff are already on campus, it was impossible. So, but from, so there, so there's lots of A, there's lots of, of, of A and B and V permits, uh, I mean, spaces under the craft center. A and B turn into visitor parking um, after 4 p.m. And most of our classes don't start until six. So, so we really strategically did that and people, it is sad, they are charging now for parking on weekends, but it's not very expensive at all. And right now during the pandemic, parking is really cheap. <laughs> and you have a number yeah. of, of oh, your courses. Uh, handicapped uh, spots down there too, don't you? Yes, yes, there are. And there we're right by an elevator too, which is really great. So you can take the <laughs> elevator. I take the stairs and it feels like hiking Mount Everest every day, but it's good for me. Um, <laughs> I mean, when the chancellor told us don't come to campus, it's like it's been two and a half years and I know. haven't been in campus. So all that oh, building ha is just uh, beyond me. Um, and yeah, the spring courses? Spring courses, we're still, um, we're still coordinating with instructors right now about when their availability is. We just, we kind of burnt them out with, winter quarter planning and then yeah. changing that plan and then changing that plan again. So we kind of oozed into spring. So we're trying to sort of recalibrate, um, but we're hoping to have that nailed down. Oh, I would say we have to have it nailed down by the end of February. All right, then I'll go back to your website and take a look. Thank you, those are great. Th thank You're you welcome. for your answers. And and just, we are going to have a winter quarter. We are going to have a winter quarter unless we get shut down. So we are going to have a winter quarter. So, so jump in if you can, um, um, cause we'll have classes starting, you know, basically February and then March. And we have, we condense some of our classes. And one of the classes I really, 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 really want to push is this, uh, intro to craft survey class that basically spends a couple weeks on a variety of different um, uh, subjects like ceramics, metal art, wood, and jewelry. So you can kind of get a little smorgasbord taste of everything, and then you get to know what you want to dive into. Oh, what it is it? it that's for the winter quarter. It is it posted on your website yet? It is and our I and our website is a little clunky. Um, because of the three tiered fee structure, we, our registration portal is the same as the rec department's portal. So it could use a little fine tuning. You have to develop a craft center profile in order to register. And, um, and it just takes a little while for us to, um, confirm your campus affiliation. But once you do, then you're able to get that second tier pricing and you don't have to pay full price. Annika, I have a critical question related to that. I am hoping yes. that they do not have to have an at UCSD email address to be able to have that to privilege pricing. At this moment, no, it's all done manually by us, which is hard, but we, we, want, to, we want to honor your status. Um, we are going to be switching over to SSO uh, to single sign on um, as sort of the on ramp to to campus affiliation. Uh, so just be patient with us and don't be afraid to to email us if you. Okay, you're going to really have to look at that because a lot of our retirees do not have at UCSD email accounts, or if really? they do have it, they have, they have it only through email forwarding, and that does not work for SSO logon. So that is yes. a real issue. I'm yeah, taking Annika, note. Those, yeah. those of us that were at the health. Um, involved in the health centers because of HIPAA. Dr. Brenner asked us to remove all our UCSD affiliated um, emails. So because we all got ah. sent patient care information, 
yeah, if Gail, we worked at the hospital. You, it's all UCSD retirees, unless they're faculty, they don't have um, that at UCSD Active Directory logon. So it's Ooh. all through email forwarding and they're not gonna be able to log in on an SSO. And so that's really gonna be problematic. You're gonna need to address that. Yep, yep, yep. No, and, and we've, yeah, we're just so, you, just so you know, we are a very tiny staff. We are a team of three people. 11,000 square feet so if I we're we're trying to sort of navigate everything as best we can um so we we are so grateful that people have been pretty patient with us but don't be be persistent too if you're having trouble uh registering for anything my email's right there and and um and don't be shy about asking for help we really want to we really want you to be part of our part of our community and have some fun with us Okay, um, and then the other thing that is going to be very important to us, you know that we have some 3000 members on our listserv, any yeah. information you can roll out to us, your class schedules um, a month ahead of each quarter, um, special events like the, the craft fair, things like that, it will really yeah. help you, so help us help you by getting yes. that information to us <laughs> so that we can push it out to our members. Okay. Oh, I love you, Suzanne. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, we would love that. Um, and in fact, maybe I can just send you the link to our winter course catalog. Yes, every single quarter, as far yeah. in advance of the quarter as you have it, send it to me and I'll make sure I get it out to all members. Oh, you were the best. In fact, I'm going to put that in the chat right now. Um, let's see. No, you guys have been so great. And I, like I said, I think we, we wouldn't exist if it wasn't for, for all of, for, um, so many of you guys. So. Yeah. And then the other thing I'm wondering is with the trolley coming in on campus, um, I'm assuming there's probably, and you may know more about this because probably students are using it, but I know they have, um, they have a loop set up. So there's probably a loop bus that you can just take the trolley to campus and hop on the loop bus and get dropped off right in front of your, your place. I hope so. I know they've been having trouble um, uh, hiring enough shuttle drivers. So I don't know if they're running as many shuttles as they would like. So I don't know about that yet, but uh, um, I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, sort of with that eventuality of people um, taking public transportation as they should for so many reasons, we have lockers on a uh, site that people can rent per quarter. So if you don't want to schlep your clay in particular back and forth from home, especially if you're using public transportation, um, we have lockers where you can keep your stuff. Okay, sounds great. Um, any other questions from our members? What kind of classes do you guys want to take? <laughs> Jewelry. <laughs> oh, excellent. Sculpting. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, and just to, to I just am going to show this off, this beautiful, well, you can't really see it very well. Um, this beautiful shawl that I'm wearing is, um, was created by Amy Crumbacker, Helen, you know her, um, who um, is uh, teaching crochet um, at the Craft Center. And um, so I am, I am dutifully showing off her amazing talent. <laughs> that is gorgeous. May I ask, do you have a knitting instructor as well? Yes, we do. We just got an amazing uh, knitting instructor, Demi Adranian. She actually is from New York. She's a fashion designer. She's super amazing and an incredible knitter. Um, and um, she's going to be teaching intro to knitting. Well, I actually have a program suggestion for you, and Ooh, that is yes. the UCSD Retirement, one of our association, one of our premier volunteer opportunities is a number of our members knit caps for the preemie babies at oh. the NICU. 
And we get questioned all the time from people who want to participate, but who don't know how to knit. So I would love even just oh. maybe a weekend class, maybe even a one day class to teach yes. people how to knit these NICU baby caps. Oh, um, yes. You know, and then all the caps are then donated to the NICU, and it's what we have donated literally thousands. But they they have a constant need. Yeah. Oh, I because one of the things we want to do is do you know meet people where they're at. So if that's a need, we could talk to Demi and see you know if we could arrange something that works for you guys' schedule and her schedule and have a have a, a specialty workshop just for you guys. Yeah, um, yeah, I would love that. And I would put that out and that might be something where we could even sponsor the members that participate, the Retirement Association, because it's one of our major volunteer projects. Oh, I think that would be fantastic. That would be, yeah. cool. and I bet you we could convince Amy, uh, if, if anyone wants to know how to crochet NICU hats, Maybe there could be an option to crochet right, versus right. But this has been really one of our major volunteer efforts over the year. But we constantly get people writing to us saying, "Well, I don't know how to knit, but or crochet, but I'd love to learn how and I'd love to participate." So, yeah. Yeah. good volunteer suggestion for you. <laughs> oh, I think that would be wonderful, and that could be because, well, like I said, we're not really using the space during the day very much. So, if you guys wanted to come during the day, or we could do it in the evening or a weekend, whatever is, you know, sort of makes the most sense for, for you guys. Um, yeah. But, you know, I could donate the use of this, of the, of the craft center. So you, we could all gather here um, and use that space. And then we would just have to, to, um, awesome. you know, I really want to make this happen. So please do, do speak, to your, speak to your instructors and get back I to will. me. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all yeah, right, yeah, members, yeah. any other questions for Annika before we let her go?